Welcome back everyone, I'm Tyler. Today on Wood Nerds, I wanna go over a floating bench with hidden storage that I built. It has these cool little compartment drawers underneath that fold down and slide out. No one would be able to see that they're there unless they actually crawl up under the bench. Um, it looks really nice. It makes like a, uh, kind of like a mud room or a um, uh, door tree or I can't, they, there's a bunch of different names for stuff like this. So uh, I don't wanna take too much time, but I wanna let you know this is gonna be broken up into three different videos. First video is gonna be this, focusing on the bench and the hidden drawers. It's a weird kind of process and procedure, so I wanna spend as much time as possible on it to make it understandable. Um, and then, so the video is not extremely long. I'm gonna break it up and do the board and batten uh, and the finishing aspects of that in the second video. And then the third video will be all of my screw ups, my tool recommendations, you know, some of the things that not everyone might need, but um, just, you know, nice things to go over. That way, if you guys have some questions, you can follow up on that. But uh, enough chatting, let's get to work. So here's our laundry room. It's really plain. We wanted to do like a mud room kind of deal. And I thought a floating bench with hidden storage would be cool. I'm using my miter saw for the cuts for everything. There's going to be a lot of repeated cuts. So make sure and use a stop block. It'll speed that process up. My measurements aren't going to be the same as yours, but I'll list some of my cuts in the description. Here I'm cutting out all of the swing arms and I'm gonna use a, a tape measure just to get the center point here. It's the, the same distance from each edge, including the top vertical edge. And then I use a compass to get that radius. You can also hammer in a nail and then use a tape measure. It's not as perfect of a solution, but it works really well. And then here are my six uh, boards cut out. I'm gonna use the miter saw to cut these off, these edges off. Um, I draw straight lines. It makes the cuts a little bit easier to predict. And as you can see here, I just knock those sides off. It's not gonna be a perfect uh, cut at the end of everything. Be careful with this. You're not gonna be fully supported by your fence. But afterwards, you can see how there's some hard edges. I'm gonna uh, smooth those out with a belt sander. I just ended up flipping mine upside down and clamping it. This isn't the safest thing to do, but if you do it right, you, you really don't have anything to worry about. And then I finished it off with hand sanding. I use the T-Track on my bench to clamp down these swing arms and then a drill guide to make sure that I'm drilling straight through. You'll see better what I'm talking about as we go further in depth here, but as you work on your frame pieces that are gonna hold these swing arms, make sure that your labeling these so that you know that they match up perfect. See, I've got the right frame and the right swing arm, and then I'm removing some material so that the washer and the bolt head sit flush with this frame piece, since this is gonna be up against the wall. I then use my swing arms as drill guides, just again, to make sure that they mate perfectly. And you only have to do this for the right and the left side, uh, hollow, that, hollow it out, that is, and the center ones, uh, you won't really need to do that too. Moving right along to the drawers, I'm going to be cutting a lot of plywood, so a 24 tooth rip blade isn't going to be as good for that. A 40 tooth blade will be better for plywood, it'll, it'll splinter less. Uh, but what we're going to do first here, I'm going to lower the blade all the way down. This is about a quarter inch, and this is a piece of scrap wood that I'm going to be using for the drawer frame. Run it through first, then run all of your other frame pieces through and then adjust your fence, run the scrap piece through a second time, and then you can test fit to see if it fits your plywood uh, drawer bottoms. Mine was actually a little tight, so I adjusted my fence one more time and then ran everything through again. I'm not really gonna show you that though. Uh, be careful when running your thin plywood through, it can bow a little bit in the center and you'll miss the blade completely. Uh, using a gripper or something like that will help. And that's what I did with the second cuts. Just be careful. Um, I run all these through and I use my bench as a outfeed table. I first time I've used this bench for that and I really liked it. The drawer bottoms were just a little too wide. So I had to adjust my fence just a hair and then run them all through again. And um, they end up fitting perfectly. Time for the assembly portion. Uh, this is really just like Legos, man. Like after you make this groove, everything should fit together really well, especially if you use that scrap piece technique I was showing you. I just push them all together. Um, the slots should be, I would say pretty tight, but you, you shouldn't have to do too much work. 
I did a test using pocket holes. This is typically what you would use to make drawers, but it, I pulled them straight apart, so I didn't really like that. And I ended up testing out some butt joints and the butt joints worked. They were super strong. So I just ended up going with that. Uh, pay attention to the orientation of the drawers though and how I put this all together. Uh, the short sides, you see how they overlap the long sides. That's by design. And I used one and three quarter inch uh, screws for this. And I'll, I'll link all this stuff in the description below. Like these right angle brackets here. These things are a godsend, man. If you don't have these, you better get them. They're super cheap and they've saved my butt a million times. Here's a different view. I recommend uh, countersinking your uh, holes. I didn't and I had a little issue there. And man, I wish cleaning up was this easy. Bada boom. Hey, man, you're not impressed. Well, Bob was. Um, anyways, afterwards, uh, I just sanded everything down and put all these pieces together, including the drawer slides, just to make sure everything fit. And it fit really nice. And then I labeled everything to make sure that when I reassemble later, I can repeat this exact setup. See, three, four, five. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp these babies together after making sure they're all flush. And then I'm gonna make my marks and just like before, use my drill guide and drill straight through and then put them together. Now here's the orientation and how everything fits. And over here on the edge, this little uh, piece of thread stuck out. So I had to grind it off with a grinder. And um, I also had to cut off a little piece off the back so it would fit over a outlet. And here I go test fitting the drawer slides. Make sure you mount to the swing arms first and then uh, mount the other portion to the drawers. Otherwise, it's going to be uneven. Just trust me, you'll see when you get there. And here I am testing out the slides as well as the pivot function here. And it worked exactly as I designed. Okay, so everything at this point is basically done. There's a couple small things I want to do, but I have everything uh, placed together as it's going to be installed. I'm going to flip this whole thing upside down. And the reason why is I want the top to be completely flat. Um, so all the boards will be flush with each other. And w the, the problem is when you go and buy boards, the milling process isn't perfect. And so some boards will be, you know, it could be like a 16th or an eighth inch difference from some of the other ones. Like this one, for example, looks to be like about a 16th inch difference between these two. So if you flip it upside down, you know that everything is riding on a completely flat surface. Um, it'll all be completely even. So that's what I'm gonna do to, to set this up. So I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna fasten these um, cross pieces or these center uh, portions in uh, to the back. And I'm just gonna use butt joints and then I'm gonna transfer it over. I'm gonna remove the drawers of course as well. And here it is. So everything's upside down at this point, including the drawers and I'm reassembling it. Um, that way I know that any little weird space is actually being accounted for when it comes to the drawer slides or anything. You can make all the measurements you want, but when it comes down to it, the tools and the materials that you're using may be off from you know what you originally measured. So here we go. I'm just doing butt joints, um, pre-drilling, and then on the front portion, I'm gonna clamp these. I'm using two really long uh, trigger clamps and I'm bringing the pressure together and I'm gonna use a spacer in front. This is gonna be a little bracket that holds each of the swing arms for each drawer uh, together. And um, I'm just using a one by four as a spacer from the front of the swing arm back, as you see. And now here I go testing it. Um, it worked out exactly as I wanted. It, it just kind of keeps it from uh, twisting. So I did that for all three drawers and then I'm gonna mount these gas pistons, which help hold the drawers up and give you some resistance when you go to pull them down. I don't really have a locking mechanism on these drawers, but you could easily make one. And I might talk about one in my uh, end video that I'm gonna, I plan on doing. And here's an example. Um, I even used stronger pistons than this because these ones didn't give me enough force. Took everything apart and transported it into my laundry room. Make sure that you mark out your studs first. And I used a cool little magnet for that. Um, I also use these little spacers or templates, I guess, to make sure that when I set this down, that it's being held level and it was, which is nice. And then I drilled and screwed my frame in and I, you know, you have to move the drawers around to get, uh, get around to it. I use some clamps to hold the face on and then again, butt joints to put that all together. And then I uh, added my drawers in here and test fit and made sure that everything works. 
It's a little tight, but I'm really happy with the fit. Hey, really quick, don't mean to interrupt. I don't have any sponsors, so this is me sponsoring myself. If you guys wouldn't mind, take a moment. If you're liking the video, actually like it. Um, drop a comment below, just say hi, sound off where you're from, your favorite part about the build or your favorite part about the channel. I'd really appreciate the feedback, but thank you guys again for watching. Let's get back to it. Now's a good time to take your measurements for your plywood top. Your house may not be perfect, so your measurements are gonna be different than mine likely. Um, on the faces of the plywood, I did 45 degree cuts, and this is gonna help give an illusion that you're using one giant piece of wood and not plywood. Um, I used a circular saw for that, and then now I'm using a table saw for the actual face of the plywood. Um, I know that my um, blade was up really high, but it just helped make that cut a little bit easier. I sanded it down with 220, and then I added some glue to the frame, and I'm going to set the top portion on there with a 45 degree cut sticking outwards. Again, I screwed this up, but make sure that you're um, leaving enough space for that face frame. I'm gonna show you how I fixed it, but it's better just to, to not encounter this issue. I used a square to kind of follow line of where my frame was, and then I used a 18 gauge nailer to uh, nail that top in. Added glue to the face, and I used some clamps to hold it in place. And again, um, with a bunch of glue on there, nailed it together. Now for the gaps, because I suck, uh, there's a pretty cool technique. You just you fill it with wood glue and then you run a dowel or some sort. I used a screwdriver here over the edge and the fibers will bend in and then the wood glue will dry and hold it together. This isn't a perfect technique. Um, I'm not, you know, the best at this, but it ended up working out really well. And up here in the top corner, I'm going to show you kind of how the, the result was. So I use glue and then any additional holes from these uh, nails, as well as any gaps that I had, I filled with this wood filler, wood filler, which is um, actually a really good match. It was hard to tell unless you're about, you know, five inches away from the project. I, no one would be able to notice that you screwed up. For one of my cutoffs, I used the little two inch piece and glued it up underneath. Similar idea, that way, even if somebody was kind of down on the floor, it still would give the presentation of one piece of wood rather than being hollowed out with drawers underneath. And the same thing goes, uh, clamped it and then nailed it in. And then I sanded everything down, being careful not to ruin the edges. Plywood, the uh, plies will show through. Taped everything off and then I added, this is um, fruit wood is the color. I'll, I'll link this down below. And then, hey, my little puppies. This is Abby and Lily took off, but she came to say hello. I was working in the shop, little cutie. I then put some poly on there. This is clear satin. This is one of my favorite finishes. Um, although actually I started using a Danish oil that I really like as well. I did about five coats and in between used 220 to sand and then uh, a vacuum just to vacuum everything off. And that's pretty much it for the finish. Well, if you're still watching, let me apologize for that. Um, I took all of the um, hardware off of the drawers and I'm gonna add another, this is a uh, polycrylic water-based. I, I only did uh, two coats on this one. It's not gonna need a lot. I mean, th these drawers are basically gonna sit, but I have them sitting on these neat little triangle things that really help them dry. Uh, then I, use my drill guide and I have this really cool hardware that's uh, a nice little leather loop. And I really like that actually as a finished look. Put my uh, drawer hardware back on, my slides, and I actually crawled up underneath there and added some paste wax. This is gonna help protect the wood and um, also help with any binding, but be warned it could squeak. So keep an eye out for that. Honestly, you're probably better applying paste wax prior to the installation of all this stuff. But that's it, man. Everything's put together. Here I am looking like an idiot. That's fake money, by the way. Your boy doesn't look at my shoes, man. I don't, I don't got, I don't got a lot of cheddar. But um, let's get, uh, let's get back to the shop. 
And there it is. That floating bench, dude, is sick. I love it. The, uh, the drawers, I've had a bunch of friends over and shown them, kind of gets rid of the cool aspect of being able to hide stuff, but they are super excited about it too. I hope you guys are as well. Uh, keep an eye out for those other two videos. If they're available, I have them linked here somewhere as well as in the description. The board and batten ties everything together so well. I'm sure you can tell from the images. My wife loves it. The last video that I'm coming out with will have all of my screw ups and things to look out for along the process. So if you're planning on doing this and you don't already know that you're going to completely kill it, um, I highly suggest you check that video out because I screwed a bunch of things up on it and I was able to remedy those problems. So um, do yourself a favor. I don't know, whatever, maybe not. But um, also, if you don't mind, like, subscribe, share, you know, all, all that stuff. It's, it's too much on it. It's too much stuff to say at the end of every video. It's super annoying. But if you guys can do that for me, it helps the channel out. If I can get enough followers and my videos are doing well enough, I can do this full time and I can come up with a bunch of crazy crap for us to build. If you're interested in that, help me out. If not, hey, you know, sorry. <laughs> sorry for wasting your time. But uh, thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you guys next time. I mean, or, or not, I guess. <laughs>